Hello everyone, welcome you all. In the today's video, we are going to learn about how we can read data from former cells. Now I have one small Excel file here, which contains one sheet and uh, which is also having some data. Now, if I just look at here, I have a salary column and bonus column, and I have a total values calculated. So these values are calculated by applying formula. So when I place my cursor here, this is a formula which is exactly applied in this column. So when I place the cursor on each and every column on the cell, the formula will be updated. Okay. So now we'll see how we can read this data. So we have seen how to read the data from Excel earlier. Now the formula column is a little different. So we cannot directly read the data from the formula column. Now we'll see how we can read the data from the formula cells. And the formula is already applied on these cells. Okay. Now let me close this Excel and now Let's go to our Eclipse. So we already created one project called Apache POI and inside this we have SRC and Excel operations. Here I'm going to create a new class and before that we will have a file. So the Excel file I'll put on under data files. I'll place my Excel file here. This is read formula.xls. I'll open this in system editor. Then you can see the same data which is available. Okay. Now I need to read salary bonus as well as total now close this excel for now let's go and create new class so i'll name it as uh, i'll name it as read data from formula cell read data from formula cell and let's take a main method and say finish okay so now we have already excel file which contains some data in the rows and columns so now we need to read the data so whenever you want to read the data from Excel sheet, first of all, uh, we need to open the file in the input stream. So we use file input stream class. I'll say file input stream and uh, create one variable called, let's say file equal to new file input stream. And here we need to specify the location of the file. So where exactly my file is present. So my Excel file is present under the project under data files, read formula.xls. That's the location of my file. So in the double quotations, I'll specify the location of the file. I say dot uh, slash, which is representing current project directory. And inside this, I have a folder called data files. And inside this, I have a file called read formula.xls ex and then semicolon. And after that, you can import this file input stream from java.io and this will throw some exception, just add it. So now we have opened the file in the reading mode by using file input stream. So from this file, I can extract the workbook. So how to extract that workbook? So we have to uh, create a workbook object. So XSS F workbook, XSF workbook, and I'll say workbook and equal to new XSSF workbook. And here we have to pass a file object. Now we got the workbook from the Excel sheet. So once we got the workbook from the Excel file, from that workbook, we have to extract the sheet. So take the workbook object dot, use a method called get sheet, get sheet. You can use either get sheet at or get sheet. When I say get sheet, we have to specify the name of the sheet. Or when I say get sheet at, we have to specify the index of the sheet. Now get the sheet and here we have to specify the name of the sheet. So the name of the sheet is I'll say sheet one. So that is the name of the sheet. Now this will return the sheet object from the workbook. So I can store that in one more variable called sheet. The type of the variable should be XSS F sheet. Okay. So now I got the sheet object. Now import this sheet from uh, Apache Poi packages and done. So now we got the workbook from the workbook. I got the sheet. So before reading the data from the sheet, we need to find out how many rows and columns we have. So sheet object dot, there is a method called guess the last row number. So this will return last row number that is exactly equal to number of rows. So I'll store this value in a variable called int. I say rows. Similarly, I want to get number of cells in each row. So first I'll get the row from the sheet. I'll get the row by using get row method. 
and we need to specify at least one row number. So let's say row number, let's say zero. And from this row, I want to find number of cells. So here I can use get last cell number. So this will exactly return the number of cells in that particular row. So I can just say uh, here I'll name, I'll name it as a calls. So now we got the rows and the columns from the Excel sheet. Now, based on this, we can write loop statements and uh, in which we can read the data from the all the rows and cells. So to representing the rows, we have to write one loop statement and representing the columns, we have to read one more loop statement. So let me write two different loops and I'm using normal for loops. So here we already counted rows and columns. So the outer for loop is representing the number of rows or it will repeat multiple times depends upon the number of rows. Inner for loop is representing the number of cells in each row. So which will repeat multiple times for each row. So which will read the cells from the particular row. So the in outer or outer for loop, I'll create one starting row. I'll say int r equal to zero and starting from zero row and then r less than or equal to number of rows. We already counted number of rows. Then every time I'll increase the row value. So I'll say r plus plus. Now in this particular row, we need to get the row from the sheet by using this number row number. So how to get the rows? Once you get the row, then we can read the cells from that particular row. So to get the row from the sheet, I can say sheet object dot get row and here I'll pass a row number. So this will get you the row object based on this number. So it will then say zero, which will get you zero row. And then the row object I'll represent with some other variable. So this is XSS F row object. Now in this particular row, I need to create multiple cells. So now this loop will read uh, will write, uh, read the data from the cells and which are present inside this row. So here I'm starting from int, uh, I say cell number, let's say I'll also start from zero, cell number start from zero and then C less than columns and then C plus plus. So this will increment cell value every time. And after that, so in this particular row, I need to write multiple cells. Sorry, I need to read the multiple cells because we are reading the data from the cells. So first we need to get the cell object and then we can read the data from that cell. So how to get the cell object from this row? So row dot, row dot, get cell is a method. And which cell you want to get? C, C representing the cell number. So this will return the cell from that particular row, the first cell. If I just look at currently this row is representing zero row. So now C value is zero. So it will get the first cell from that particular row. And I can store that in a one more variable called cell. Now the type of this variable is XSS F cell object. So once you get the cell object, we have to read the data from the cell. So here C value is zero. So first it will create, uh, it will read the first row inside the first row. This loop will repeat or multiple times. It will get the multiple cell objects because every time C value will increment. So it depends upon the number of columns after reading all the cells data, then it will go up and again, increment the row. And again, it get the another row. And again, this loop will read all the cells from that row. So this loop will repeat like this. So for each row, this will read multiple cells. After completion of all the cells, after reading the data from all the cells, then again, outer for loop will go to next row. So here, so we created one cell. We got the one cell from the existing row. So now we need to read the data from the cell. So before reading the data from the cell, we need to find out cell type. Suppose if the cell contains a number data, we can consider as a numeric type. If the cell contains a, a text data or string type of data, we can consider as a string type or if I have some type Boolean values. So it depends upon the data, we can consider the type of the cell. But here we need to dynamically get the type of the cell so that I can use proper method which will read the data from the cell. So for that, what I can do is take this cell object, take the cell object and here I'm using one method called cell dot get cell type. So this is a method I'm using. Cell dot get cell type. So this will return either numeric or cell or Boolean or whatever. So basically it will return the type of the cell. 
So based on this type, I can use proper method, which will read the data. So here I'll use one switch command, switch, and I'll put this condition inside the switch, cell dot get, a cell, get cell type. So here I'll write multiple cases. If cell dot get cell type is string, is a string, then what I'll do is, this is uppercase, okay? This is a syntax. So if the get cell type is equal to string, then what I can do is I can just print something like system.or.println from this particular cell, I can get the data. So because if it is a string type cell, then I can use one method called get, get string cell value, get a string cell value method I can use. This is a method I can use. Okay, get string cell value. If the cell type is a string, then I can use get a string cell value method to read the data from that and I can say break after that. Suppose if the cell type is, if the cell type is numeric, if the cell type is numeric, if the cell type is numeric, so then I'll get the value from the cell by using cell dot get numeric cell value. And after that I say break. And suppose if the cell style is Boolean, if the cell style or cell type is a Boolean, and then I can say, so I can just get the value by using cell dot get Boolean cell value. And after that, I'm just saying break. Okay, so now I have covered string, numeric and Boolean. So it depends upon the type of the cell, we compare it, then we use proper method. If the cell type is a string, then I can use get a string cell value. If the cell type is a numeric, then I'll use get a numeric cell value. If the cell type is a Boolean, then I can use get a Boolean cell value. So this is a way we can put multiple conditions. So after deciding this, uh, I can just align the data. I can simply say system.out.print and I'll separate columns uh, like uh, by adding some pipe symbol. I say only print, okay? And after printing one cell, uh, after printing complete row, then I can jump to the next row. So before that, I can write one statement, just print ln. So it will basically jump to the next line, okay? So now this is how we can write the logic, which will read the data from the Excel sheet. So which will read all the rows as well as all the columns. Let me repeat once again. So first we have opened the file in the input stream. Then we got the workbook. From that workbook, we get the sheet. And once we get the sheet, we find out the rows and columns or rows and cells. And depends on that, we have created a new row. And then we have created multiple cells. So sorry, we have just read the row from the cell. Then once you read the row from the, once you read the row from the sheet, then we read the cell and we find out the cell type accordingly, we use proper method to read the data from the cell. So this inner row will repeat multiple times, depends upon the number of cells which are present in the particular row. After completion of reading data from those cells, it will go to outer for loop, it will increment another row, then it will get the another row, and again, it will read all the cells data from that particular row. So this loop will repeat till it reaches the last row. Now, this is a code I have written. Now let me just execute. So finally, I'll close the stream after completion of this file dot close. Okay, now let us try to execute and see currently, this is our Excel file. Let me open and show you. So read formula.xl. So current, uh, the first column is having salary, second column is bonus, third column is a total. So these values are calculated by applying the formula, okay? Now observe this carefully. Now I'm running my code. Right click, run as Java application. Okay. So the alignment is not correctly done. So what I can do is I can simply say this is print. Okay. I just make them as a print so that it will print in the single line. Now let's execute the code. All right. So now we can just look at this. If I just look at this, I don't get the total value. Okay, I haven't get the total value. So because why we are not get the total value here is, 
uh, we say get cell type, we got it. So get cell type is matching with the string, we got the value. If the matching with the numeric, then we'll get the value. If it is matching with the Boolean, then also we can get the value. But if I don't get the value here means what? We didn't exactly type is not matching with any type here. So whatever the cell type we are getting, which is not exactly matching with either string or numeric or Boolean. So that is the reason it is not printing anything in the total column, right? So, but what is the type of this column? So the formula is a different. So when I just look at this Excel sheet and this is basically a formula column. Okay, if I just look at this salary is having numeric data, bonus is having numeric data and total is also having numeric data. But even though if it is having numeric data, we cannot consider the type of the cell is a numeric because for numeric, we already written one case. If it is a numeric, get the value we have written, but still it is not getting the total even though we have a numeric data. So this the cells contains a numeric data, no issues, but the cell type is different. So what is the type is here as formula type. So that we have to specify. So there is one more case we have to write. If case is a formula, okay, if the case is a formula, then what I have to do, if the case is formula, if it is a formula column, then what type of data we have in it? Numeric data only. So we have to use the same method like this. We have to use same method because we have a data is a numeric data. So we have to use get a numeric cell value. So even though it is a numeric column or even though if it is a numeric cell or even though it is a formula cell, the method is same, get a numeric cell value we have to use. But based on the type of cell, we have to decide. So that when I get the cell type, it will not match with the numeric. If it is a having formula, that cell will not match with the numeric. So in that case, this method will not apply. But if a cell type equal to formula, then I can still use get a numeric cell value. So what does it mean is get a numeric cell value method I can apply to get the data from the numeric column or numeric cell as well as formula cell. From both the cells, I can get the data by using get a numeric cell value. But the difference is we need to check the type of the cell. If the type of the cell is numeric, then I get the value. If the type of the cell is a formula, then I can use get a numeric cell value. But we need to check the type of the cell. That's the most important. Now let's execute now when I run as a Java application. So now we can see we got the data now. Okay, because this cell type is matching with the formula type, then we use get a numeric value because we have a numeric data in that. Okay, so this is how we can read the data from the formula column or formula cells. So if the cell contains some formula is applied, we cannot directly get the data. So we need to check the cell type. If the cell type is formula, then I can use get a numeric cell value, which will read the data from the particular cell. Okay, so this is how we need to read the data from the formula cells. All right, so that's all for this video guys. Thanks for watching.